Hi, I'm Tim Warner from CBT Nuggets. Welcome to this CBT Nuggets micro nugget entitled, How to Directly Connect Two Systems. The question that we're seeking to answer here is, how do I get, for instance, two PCs connected together such that I can, for instance, transfer files from one to the other? Maybe you have a desktop and a laptop, or maybe a colleague, a friend, a family member brought over his or her computer, and maybe you want to wipe the hard drive and fix various issues that may be present on that system, and you, again, want to back up the user's data before performing that wipe. Well, let's do a little bit of history here, because there is some fascinating history on how we accomplish this direct connection. At least as far as Windows is concerned, the old, old school way to go was a technology built into earlier versions of Windows, Windows 95 in particular, called Direct Cable Connection, or DCC. You used what's called a null modem cable to create a direct connection between those systems. This guy up here in the upper left of this diagram is a null modem cable, and it uses the largely antiquated RS-230 32 serial port. I shouldn't say antiquated because even though this technology is old as the proverbial hills, it's still seen in this very day in 2012 in server rooms and switch closets, so I shouldn't be so quick to dismiss it. The bottom line though is that the serial line is a very inefficient, kludgy way to do data transfer. That's for darn sure, and direct cable connection was extremely painful to use in practice. Later we had the Windows Easy Transfer system in later versions of Windows, and this is a proprietary file transfer technology that Microsoft developed for two reasons. Number one, Microsoft is a hardware original equipment manufacturer, so they partnered with other OEMs who created, Belkin is one example, who created this proprietary double-headed USB Easy transfer cable. The idea here is we don't have to worry about TCP IP IP addressing. You simply plug the USB ports into each system and then the easy transfer cable has this crossover circuitry here in the middle of the cable that takes care of crossover issues and then we can simply run the easy transfer wizard, the file and settings transfer wizard, and so forth to do a data backup or restore. This is particularly helpful for non-technical people who for instance may have purchased a new computer and want to migrate their files and settings from their old system to their new system. So Easy Transfer still exists today as a way to get data from one system to another, but frankly, the new school way to go is with home residential routers being pretty much the standard nowadays. Who doesn't have, for instance, a high-speed internet connection and a wireless or Wi-Fi router? I know that there are a lot of people who don't. I don't mean to sound jaded just because I work in the tech industry. But the bottom line is if you do have a Wi-Fi network at home, it makes sense that you use either Wi-Fi software-based networking, or if you still want to do a hardwire connection between systems, you make use of Ethernet cabling. Now, the thing to keep in mind with Ethernet cabling, friends, is that you can't take a regular straight-through Ethernet cable, plug it into the Ethernet port of System 1, take the other side of the cable, plug it into the Ethernet port on System 2, and expect those systems to work. That's due to the wiring schematic or pin out of the straight through cable. Instead, if you want to do that or if you need to do a direct cable connection using Ethernet, you need to make sure to procure for yourself a crossover cable that has, well, literally some crossed wires in it to obviate the problem that is posed with the straight through cable. Traditionally, crossover cable is yellow, so it's pretty easy to spot. A lot of times the word crossover will be printed right on the jacket of the cable itself, and that's what you need. Now, the issue with that is when we use Ethernet, you need to to be mildly concerned with issues like IP addresses. Microsoft has come a long way though in terms of technologies like automatic private IP addressing such that you should be able to do a crossover connection between two systems and not have to get into the nuts and bolts of how they're communicating. A PIPA should assign them, assign the two systems addresses that are viewable by each other. Now if you have a wireless router you're going to have dollars to donuts between three and five switch ports built in. This Netgear model is a standalone workgroup switch that provides just that port aggregation or network connectivity. And the idea here is you can take a traditionally blue category 5E or 6 Ethernet cable, also called a straight through cable, plug one end of it into an available switch port, the other end into the network interface Ethernet 
port of your systems. And again, depending upon how you're doing IP, if it's a wireless router or a wired router, there should be a DHCP server built in that will assign appropriate addresses to each of your devices. Failing that, if you were to plug them into, for instance, this, a standalone switch, and you're using Microsoft Windows, a PIPA should be able to get those systems viewable to each other. So those are the basic mechanics, physically, in terms of cable setups, how we would get two systems, in particular two Windows systems, communicating with each other. I do want to say that the Ethernet option is available to any operating system, Mac, Windows to Mac, Mac to Mac, Windows to Linux, Linux to Linux. You can just run those permutations and combinations however you want. The good news about the Ethernet solution is that it's non-proprietary and uses standard protocols. I hope that this has been informative for you, and I'd like to thank you for viewing.